this week on the show, we have Sarah Marks, the founder of Bioenergetic Wellbeing. Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for watching. This show is all about giving you insights and showcasing brands that help you to live your best life and give you confidence. As always, I want to kickstart your morning with some motivational advice to help you to feel inspired and energized to start your day. Today, I want to talk about the importance of understanding how to take your brain off autopilot and start living. Think of a car on autopilot or cruise control. It just cruises in one direction without needing much thought or effort. Similarly, our brains can go on autopilot if we don't take the steering wheel and direct it where we want it to go. When we are on autopilot, we let external factors bother us and affect our mood, the weather, the news, how someone treated us, and the list goes on. But when we begin to take the driver's seat and direct our minds to work in our favor, we start thriving and living. The key to taking your mind off autopilot is self-awareness. Oftentimes we get so stuck in the past or worrying about the future that we miss living in the present moment and enjoying life in the here and now. Make your mission today to start becoming more present and reminding yourself that you are in the driver's seat at all times. As Paula Reinhardt quotes, life is a journey you do not want to make on autopilot. Stay tuned. Coming up after the break. Sarah, you're an expert in Reiki and kinesiology. Uh, so how do you use both of these uh, methods to promote well-being for your clients? Uh, well, I just basically, what I do is um, I muscle test to see what's actually appropriate. And the healing, actually, it can go a variety of ways, to be honest. But um, in saying that, yeah, again, it goes back to the basic principle of energy in that you're either creating an electrical charge and a force around something so if something's lacking, it's like, hey, we need this. So we're going to put energy around this, create a force around it, charge around it. That's going to create an, a point of attraction and that's going to generate, you know, a shift, a change. Um, when we have things like illness or stress or dysfunctions, it's like we need to remove the energy from that so that that, that no longer has a charge. If it no longer has a charge, it becomes, you know, non-energetic. It doesn't have any power per se. So, you know, it sounds funny. It's like, oh, this is just energy, but literally this is what actually everything, um, energy is like, it is the intermediary that we work with, you know? Wardrobe provided by Le Chateau. Next up on the show, we have Sarah Marks, the founder of Bioenergetic Wellbeing. Through her company, Bioenergetic Wellbeing, she uses the science of energy balancing to cultivate health and wellness. Sarah, thank you so much for being on the show today. How are you doing? I'm good, thanks. Yourself? I am doing very well. I was just telling you about the amazing work that you're doing uh, with Bioenergetic Wellbeing. Let's talk about that. I know in 2016, you went through your own healing journey, which actually led you to heal others and help others. I know you were doing Reiki and hypnotherapy. So tell us about that period in your life. Yeah, that was a very colorful period in my life. Um, so what happened was I actually endured some pretty intense um, traumas when I was younger and I was suffering from complex post-traumatic stress, which I wasn't aware of at the time. This is the thing. And I think a lot of us actually go through our lives you know, with um, post-traumatic stress, not understanding actually, you know, that we're actually suffering from that. And with myself, um, I actually started having memories that were coming back to me from my youth. Mm -hmm. And it was just a very, it was kind of like my, uh, I think with my ability, it's always a bit challenging as well. Mm -hmm. um, so I was kind of going through, my ability was really developing at that time as well in my life, which was very interesting. So I had that aspect um, and which what happened with that, I guess the byproduct of that was that I was becoming, uh, I'm very sensitive, obviously, like when I'm around people, I'm kind of like this psychic sponge. I'm very sensitive to my environment. So that's when I started um, my quality of life. I've really struggled with that as a result with my extrasensory abilities and whatnot. So I just wanted to improve the quality of my life. And I found that especially when you are suffering from um, things like, you know, trauma, um, PTSD, um, in my case, complex post-traumatic stress, you kind of can just fall through the cracks in the health system. Yeah. And I think that's kind of what was happening with me as well. Um, I would see doctors and I would go through all the classical medical 
processes um, and they just weren't diagnosing it. They didn't know what was going on. Um, I was suffering from uh, fibromyalgia and, you know, it was just like I was just getting really down because I wasn't getting to the bottom of why I was feeling like this in my life and the medical system, the classical medical system just wasn't able to help me. And so this is actually when I started delving into holistic healing modules. Mm -hmm. And so it kind of started with, um, actually it kind of started when I was 20, to be honest, but I had no idea what it was back then. My partner at the time, he was, um, I was living in Italy with him and he was telling me that his dad was a scientist and a kinesiologist. And I was like, what is a kinesiologist? And um, we visited them in Naples and they actually started doing energy work on me. And that's the first experience I ever had. And it was just incredible what actually, you know, what came from that and how I felt after a session of even just one session, having an energy, um, having my energy balance. So in 2016, that's kind of where I delved into that further and I started looking at different modules within energy healing and then just kind of doing my research and it kind of just went from there and I started seeing how this correlation of um, you know the application of these holistic modules together what they can actually bring to a person and the change that they can you know help a person um, achieve that you know is actually suffering and so much we do just in silence you know it's like the me you can't see a lot of people um you know whether it's big t little t trauma and that was the period in my life really yeah where i was i was actually finding my way so to speak mm -hmm. i want to talk a little bit about your gifts your extra sensory gifts uh when did you discover them and how oh i just call it the circus um it's all it's all kind of going on with me <laughs> um I was actually born with them, oh. uh, but I didn't really understand it when I was young. This is the thing. Um, and I didn't really grow up in an environment that was conducive of, you know, its growth and nourishment. Um, so, yeah, I mean, when I was young, um, I just, I would notice, like, I, w I would actually see, I would be able to um, see entities. I would be able to... Um, they would say things to me. I would be able to actually communicate with them. Yeah. They would show me things. Um, I would see energies. I would, you know, um, with kinetics with myself, I'm very sensitive when somebody's talking and I can actually see all the energy and the frequencies wow. and signaling and yeah. how that's all yeah. moving and evolving um, with speech. So that's kind of helped me as well, actually, even in my own work, it's kind of... Um, I guess that's kind of where I've got, I've gained that kind of insight mm -hmm. into the nature of existence to that degree. But um, when I was little, I don't think I really understood it. Like I just thought it was kind of a game when I was little that I would see someone and I'd be like, oh, they're going to die. Like this year of this situation of this health issue. And I would know if people were going to get sick, I can, I can look at somebody and I can see in a very deep biochemical kind of level. Wow. Uh, logically. Yeah. I just, I know it's like this, it's, I kind of call it, it's almost like an omniscient, um, you know, uh, like kind of linguism and intelligence. It's omniscient, I think, in its nature, and it's just something, it's almost like I'm just able to log in and I just can tap into that, and that's how I experience things. Um, and my senses are very heightened in that um, in that sense as well. So, yeah, yeah. it's, it's um, but like I said, when I was little, it was just like a game to me. I'd be like, you know. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, <laughs> but you're using your extrasensory gifts to heal other people, uh, their past traumas, negative energy. So how do you find your client's well-being? What are some, some things you do to achieve that? Yeah, I mean, what, what I do love about doing energy work is that it's um, able to all just be monitored through, you know, the biofeedback, through the muscle testing. So you can actually just, you know, a, it, a person's stresses and their dysfunctions and things, it will all muscle test. So it's very accurate in that sense um, and what I've actually found is like yeah when you actually you know when you're moving energy around it's almost like when you look at lymphatics right mm -hmm. 
if you don't lymphatics work um, with the immunity as well in that sense of like I kind of look at it like you're flushing a toilet you've got you know there's toxins and junk and you're flushing it out so to speak and you're doing the same thing effectively when you're moving energy you know you're effectively mm -hmm. flushing and moving you're either creating a charge and a force around something um, or you're turning it off you're actually removing energy from that dysfunction that stress and whatnot so you know when you harmonize the energy you harmonize the body you yeah. literally do. and the thing is what I love about kinesiology um, uh, especially with kinesiology um, in that sense like you're you know it actually you uh, muscle testing all sorts of things and you're actually balancing all this stuff mm -hmm. um, and it's really cool as well because you actually can feed that back to the person mm -hmm. um, Ways, you know, I can actually relay the results to the person and, you know, it's just really interesting actually what sometimes comes up, the root causes of an issue, you know, and you can yeah. change, again, what I love about it is you can change the neurological pathways um, and that's effectively what you're doing, um, you know, when you're healing trauma, you're actually creating new neurological pathways in the brain so that you're actually, you know, viewing the trauma differently. Um, that creates change you know behavioral change and whatnot when you're changing habits when you're healing from trauma and whatnot that's basically effectively what kinesiology is doing as well it's creating new neurological pathways in the brain and through the body um you, you know biochemically mental emotional like yeah it actually covers everything so yeah I actually had a hypnotherapy session uh last year with a person named Charles West and it was um I went into it not expecting much and uh, when I came out of it I was shocked at the results so these things definitely work and really uh, make you face uh, your past or things like that um, so it's, it's actually very interesting this kind of work I want to talk about the different uh, services that bioenergetic well-being offers yes so bioenergetic well-being um, it offers Reiki kinesiology services that's kind of effectively what I'm doing right now with bioenergetic well-being. I do also sell lymphatic cleanse tea strips, but yeah, primarily what I'm actually specializing in is energy balancing. Um, and I think just with my own experience as well that I've had with um, complex post-traumatic stress, uh, that's helped me a lot in terms of knowing kind of how to approach, um, you know, mm -hmm. situations where people are, you know, because it in that sense you know they are kind of fragile mm -hmm. really helped me to be able to actually you know know what's the best approach with people and how to kind of you know help them through that mm -hmm. um, you know like I always say though with trauma um, if somebody is suffering from you know like an extreme trauma like a big T trauma so to speak I mean it's all relative big T small T traumas um, but you know sometimes people can be very fragile in that sense of like they may um, you know you don't want to actually trigger them so there's a real kind of you know like soft approach that you need to take in that sense where what you're aiming to do is um, effectively strengthen regulate the nervous system and kind of you know in that sense um, where they're going to be able to release that kind of stuck trauma out but without kind of you know triggering them so to speak um, so I find energy balancing is, is a very, you know, it's a very soft, um, it's a very gentle kind of healing method and it works very well in conjunction with other holistic modules, you know, as well, like somatic um, experiencing, uh, you know, psychology, uh, Cairo, you know, naturopath, etc. Um, what are some effects of people that don't uh, deal with their trauma or unresolved issues? What are some um, consequences of that? Oh my goodness, I'm living proof of that. It just, it just creates havoc. Yeah. Um, this is the thing, uh, and what can happen as well. Um, I've actually spoken to, I've dealt with a few people actually that have had situations like myself where they develop dissociative memory loss in childhood through traumatic experiences. Um, it doesn't have to be like, you know, so extreme like what I went through. Um, but, you know, to uh, some degree, like, yeah, it's a very um, 
fragile kind of thing, you know. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Trauma. It's like, yeah, I feel like it's just, um, it is like a step by step process um, with healing. It's really iterative in that sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? I feel that because you went through your own traumas, you're able to heal others even better because you understand it. So you're coming from a place of, of being very um, kind and compassionate in your approach, you know, and sensitive about it. So I love that yeah. you're using your own uh, wounds as, as power to heal other people. So I think that's, I commend you on that because I think that's uh, really important. I think a lot of people don't even know if they have trauma, right? Yeah. <laughs> Until it comes up all of a sudden this is the thing like um what happens is it gets stuck like yeah. when your nervous system experiences something that is so traumatic um it literally sometimes it's too big for the nervous system to process this is kind of what happens it gets stuck in the nervous system so what happens is you know you've had you've experienced the trauma and then you're carrying on with your life and you're just doing your own thing and you don't understand why something could happen because the thing is um triggers can happen anything can create a trigger um, and it can happen unconsciously as well, so you're not aware of it. And you could be fine one minute, and then the next minute you're shaking or you're angry and you're experiencing these really intense emotions and you want to escape the present. And it's like, why? What just happened? You know, nothing really happened for me to be like this. Why am I feeling like this? Mm -hmm. And what is happening is something in your environment has triggered some memory that's, you know, some trauma that's in your nervous system, you know, the nervous system activates and it releases cortisol and the related, um, you know, emotions and whatnot necessary to kind of move. Mm -hmm. So it, it's like the toilet flushing, so to speak. It's trying to actually release this stuck trauma and that can be triggered by anything. Um, so, you know, somebody can be fine one minute and then for no apparent reason, they can be triggered and they can go into quite a state. Um, actually what would happen to me I didn't know what was wrong with me I just you know yeah. <laughs> literally, I just had no understanding and I thought you know, it's really depressing as well because then it can turn into self-hate and self-loathing you're like what's wrong with me why am I you know not normal like what you know I don't understand this but what's happening is like if you can't release that trauma from the nervous system that's what will keep happening effectively you will keep triggering and those triggers are you know, um, different intensities, but, you know, mm -hmm. they're all damaging the quality of your life. I mean, that will affect your relationships. It affects your work, your, your life balance. It affects people's sleep. Yeah. It, it just, it really um, decreases the quality of overall life. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. ground actually released. Mm -hmm. And how does balancing your energy promote wellness and, and health just for someone maybe that even is um, holding themselves back, you know, someone is maybe who's afraid of success or, or maybe just has some negative energy they need to clear. How can this help them to achieve wellness? Oh my gosh, I can't tell you how many people come in and they're like, you know, I'm just, I'm feeling a bit down, I'm a bit tired and, you know, I don't feel so good and I'm like, wow sweetheart you have you are surrogating right now like all of this stuff and you've got all these attached energies on you and a lot and people don't realize that half the time and they don't they, they might be feeling depressed and tired and down or agitated not realizing that they have an array of like attached energies and they're surrogating um and what happens surrogating in that sense is like our energy system is leaking and it's actually like we're taking on someone's um, belief or we're taking on an emotion, we're holding it for them. And that happens a lot. We, we surrogate emotions, others' emotions, others' beliefs, others' realities, you know. Yeah. And it's just an absolute mess. I just feel like the way that we live is so unhygienic and a lot of people are none the wiser. And that's what creates that lethargy or, you know, that when they're not motivated, it's just, you'd be surprised at how different you can feel just through actually moving and balancing and harmonizing the energy. Yeah, and it doesn't help, right, with social media and the news and all of this, all of these uh, visuals that we see on a constant basis, right? That I'm sure that also adds to some, some negative energies uh, coming into our, our reality. So I, I can see why, why it's much needed to clear the energies. I wanna talk about your unique gift around the phenomena of hands-on healing and quantum entanglement. Tell us what that is and how you um, approach that. 
Yeah, well, in that sense, quantum entanglement takes place in a sense when you are kind of healing someone, um, you know, I mean, in that sense, in reality, it's kind of we talk about quantum entanglement because the separation is kind of, you know, an illusion, so to speak. But what happens when when the healing is taking place, it's like the practitioner and the patient, um, you literally kind of experience this quantum entanglement per se. And what happens is that's kind of where that transmutation process happens, where it's like it's like an information communication and exchange of sorts takes place between you know the patient and the healer and what happens is as the facilitator you're able to then generate you know mm -hmm. that healing and what's needed energetically um, you know in that communication that energetic like communication so to speak through the hands yeah. uh, which you know is fantastic it's like an omnilinguism that you know kind of takes place energetically so to speak it's really interesting the way that energy actually communicates and knows how to actually heal you know the body knows how to heal itself and that's kind of i don't know i think i was just it's just something that i was born with again like i didn't really understand it till i got older but i just had this ability when i would lay hands like i would actually be able to um you know i pick up a lot and I'm able to then kind of you know just translate that and like that healing takes place just through the laying of hands where it's like I said it's like an information communication and exchange takes place but in a non-verbal manner you know mm -hmm. through the like very interesting and and Sarah you're an expert in Reiki and kinesiology uh, so how do you use both of these uh, methods to promote well-being for your clients uh, well, I just basically, what I do is um, I muscle test to see what's actually appropriate and the healing actually, it can go a variety of ways to be honest, but um, in saying that, yeah, again, it goes back to the basic principle of energy in that you're either creating an electrical charge and a force around something. So if something's lacking, it's like, hey, we need this. So we're going to put energy around this, create a force around it, charge around it that's going to create an, a point of attraction and that's going to generate, you know, a shift, a change. Um, when we have things like illness or stress or dysfunctions, it's like we need to remove the energy from that so that that, that no longer has a charge. If it no longer has a charge, it becomes, you know, non-energetic. It doesn't have any power per se. So, you know, it sounds funny. It's like, oh, this is just energy, but literally this is what actually everything um energy is like it is the intermediary that we work with you know mm -hmm. with help um a lot of the time like you'd, you'd be really surprised like uh, just use an example like um i was watching this documentary and there was this really fascinating guy that was uh he actually was a doctor and he left because he said i'm just really sad and i'm sick and tired of like actually dealing uh working with people you know their symptoms i'd actually rather actually work with you know prevention so to speak so he actually turned into a kinesiologist he turned to that in his life and they had a really sick horse um this person that he visited and the horse just had this you know um, issue with its leg and nothing was working uh, no medication the vets just couldn't help them so as a last resort, they thought, we'll just get onto this guy and we'll get kinesiology done on the horse. And muscle testing, all these things, and then finally what he found in the leg was actually that the horse was holding a trauma. It got stuck wow. in the leg. The horse experienced a bird falling out of a tree. Um, I don't know how he was able to, oh, something about it came up in the memory. It was so fascinating. The horse experienced something traumatic, a, a bird falling out of a tree and it died and the horse wasn't able to help that bird and that trauma was sitting in its leg. When they cleared the energy around that experience, the horse's leg just got better, like almost, yeah. you know, instantaneously. And it was just like, my God. Wow. Very so, interesting. That, sometimes you'd be really surprised what actually is creating the pain and the stress, so to speak. And when you actually go to, and you delve into the root problem of that, and you shift the energy around that, that actually can create a neurological, you know, a biochemical, a physical change. 
Mm -hmm. Little yeah. knot. Right? Yeah. Well, I mean, if you think about everything in the universe, it's all energy, right? And as we yeah. know, that energy can't be created or destroyed. It can only be redirected. So I think that's actually very interesting if you look at it like that, right? So. I, yeah, it's very, very interesting. And, you know, Sarah, I created my show to inspire, to uplift, and just to be a beacon of light for anyone watching, just to cheer them up and for them to know that anything is possible. So I want to ask you for, you know, anyone that's watching this maybe is going through old traumas, maybe is feeling stuck, maybe is in a rut and just not feeling motivated. What would you say to inspire and uplift them? Wow, I would say, you know, you find find what feels good. You know, that's yeah. where you need to take time out when you're not happy. And it's like you need to just go to, you know, step one, yeah. <laughs> like why I'm not happy and start questioning it. Find find what feels good. And then, you know, what I find a lot of the time helps us to change is just by, you know, again, um, iterative in that sense of like finding, you know, changing little habits like that's one of the greatest things that can help with motivation is like just find even one thing that you can do like something that's really that you you know that you can actually keep and, you know sometimes i find if you just make these really big promises it's like you can't keep them to yourself and that just you know feeds that um unmotivated state or those negative feelings you know and it yeah. makes you feel like change is impossible but if you adopt like small habits in your day like little things like it might even you might even start off with just i'm going to drink a glass of water every morning when i get up lemon water yeah that's really easy and it's something that you can keep and then watch that change over time watch you change over time with that small habit and then incorporate another you know small habit and i find that's probably one of the greatest um greatest ways to actually kind of bring about change um and find what feels good you know, a lot of the time when we're, you know, feeling down, it's because, you know, we're not nourishing ourselves, you know. Yeah. So it's like just be kind to yourself and question that, like what what, what feels good yeah. and start doing that, you know. It's replacing, you know, a need. Um, it's filling a need positively, you know. Find out what you need, what feels good, and then fill that you know in a positive way with something yeah i think that's great advice uh, especially the being kind to ourselves because i feel like we live in this world of you know grind and motivation and hustle and sometimes we we don't take a step back and look at ourselves and think you know we need to fill our own cup and love ourselves so i like that advice i think that's very practical and and great for anyone watching so yeah <laughs> and sarah for our viewers that want to use your services with bioenergetic well-being and learn more about your story where can they do so so you can hear about my story actually uh, on my website and also my Instagram page. So I have um, an Instagram page and a Facebook uh, account as well. So yeah, look, I'm always posting on Instagram. Uh, you can book online through the website. So that's um, www.bioenergeticwellbeing.com.au. Um, and my services are actually, uh, I do remote services, so I work with people all around the world, which is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, and I've worked with all sorts of things like animals, people, um, unborn children, like a fetus, like anything can be balanced and healed, so to speak. So <laughs> it's pretty interesting. Amazing. Amazing. Well, Sarah, thank you so much for being on the show today. Uh, congratulations on your success and really using your story to heal and inspire others. So I think that's amazing. Keep up the amazing work. Thank you so much. It's lovely to be here. Thanks. TAC TV is available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple and Android TVs, as well as on Apple and Android phones. Watch us live to YouTube and Facebook. This week on the show, we have Sarah Marks, the founder of Bioenergetic Wellbeing.